I put my hands around my wife's neck and did that same thing. He describes feeling extremely angry. So he basically grabs Shanann, throws her down on the bed, and strangles her right on Cece's bed, is what he said. This was him seizing upon an opportunity to shift the blame away from himself as much as he could and towards somebody that no longer could defend herself. It is crucial at this point in time that we find out where they are so that we can really start working on the homicide investigation portion of this to make sure that once he's handcuffed and once he's put in jail, he's never getting out. Internally, there is outrage. I didn't want to show that to him because I really wanted Chris to keep talking. It was very hard. Where are they? Not that first location I went to that day. So Chris, are they in something? Are they under the ground? Like, where would you find them? You take us out there? I thought there's no way I want to walk there. Are they all free out there, Chris? Yes. Chris talked about the area being very vast. He talked about it being maybe 10 miles by 20 miles. So to me, it was very, very important that he actually describe in detail where they were at that site, just because there were so many different places where he could have buried them or hidden them. What is that? That's the Okay. Whereabouts? Where are they? Okay, can you work it for me? Is that person in? Okay. Where are the girls at? Mm -hmm. Are they in the tanks? What's in the tanks? It's a mixture of oil and water. I just couldn't believe a father could do something so horrible to his children and his wife. So was a sheet found down here? Mm -hmm. What is that from? That was what Chanel was wrapped in. I was completely disgusted. I felt sick. But at the same time, I was like, we need to go get them. We need to go get them right now. I knew everyone's lives were going to be changed from that moment on. I would hate for Chanel to have to go through that. Yeah. You know, it's not fair. It's not fair. Shanann's pregnant. She's exhausted. I don't believe she's going to wake up, you know, after two, three hours of being home from a trip, then to go murder her two daughters. To me, that made no sense at all. So you want to tell me the truth? That is, that is the truth. So you're good with the public knowing that Shanann killed her daughters? I did not hurt these girls. Are you OK with the public knowing that Shanann killed Yes, because I did not hurt these girls. I did not believe at all that Shanann had done anything to her family to hurt them. I believed that Chris murdered his entire family. He shook my hand hours after he did this to his family. Our goal was to get that family back together as soon as possible. We all struggled with the fact that we didn't know what the truth was. The interview that he gave is worse than any of us could have possibly imagined.
Chris told his father that Shanann had killed the girls and that he had then killed Shanann. Even though I didn't necessarily believe his version of events and I didn't buy into his description of how it went down, there was a sense that we were, we were progressing. Hey, Chris. Do you mind if we take pictures of your um, hands and chest and stuff? Just... Based on his statements, we had probable cause to believe that he had committed the crime of murder. That's the legal threshold that we need to get to to arrest him. Chris, please. Don't stand up for me. I'm going to have you face that wall. At the conclusion of the interrogation, officers came in, placed Chris Watson handcuffs, took him out to a patrol car, and he was transported to the Weld County Jail. We're not going to wait till the next day. Our goal was to get that family back together as soon as possible. About 11 o'clock at night, we started to excavate the dirt. We wanted to get Shannon out of the ground, if that's, in fact, where she was. In the numerous excavations I've done, bodies are usually laid out. Shannon was curled up as if just thrown in. It was almost discarded like trash and then covered with dirt. Chris Watts said that the children were in the oil tanks. The problem is getting them out of those tankers was a very complicated process that we knew it was now 1.30 at night. We weren't going to be able to do that evening. At this point, we have strong reason to believe that we know where the bodies of the children are, and recovery efforts are in process on that. When we were at the oil site on the morning of the 16th, I think everybody there kind of arrived with this sense of dread, because you know what the mission is. You know that you're recovering the bodies of two small children. This is going to be a huge undertaking to drain these tanks. We questioned whether small children would fit through that opening. We also couldn't see them, you know, when we opened the hatch from the top. So there was a point where we thought he could still be lying. One of my CSIs went up and opened the inlet, and we found a tuft of hair along the inside of one of the oil tank inlets. And then we knew. What a horrible, horrible thought that is. Looking at those oil tanks and seeing the size of the hatch at the top, and then to have to pull them out of that oil, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. The first tank was the one that had CC in it. She was still in her nightgown. She'd just gone to bed. <laughs> the second tank had Bella inside. I can't get that image out of my head. I don't see how somebody who loves their family could even possibly do something like that. I've been doing this for over 30 years. I've investigated or been a part of investigation of over 170 homicides. And I don't get emotional very often. I'm able to detach myself to a certain degree. I was not able to detach myself from this. Um... There is the arduous task of determining a cause and manner of death. Are there injuries consistent with his version of events? The pathologist concluded that Shanann Watts had died from asphyxiation due to manual strangulation. The most significant injuries that we found during the autopsy were injuries to Bella. She had injuries which suggested that uh, she fought back as somebody covered her airway. The idea of her fighting for her life as somebody snuffed out her breath was hard to accept. 
And then Chris had told us that he had witnessed Shanann strangling Cece, but the pathologist determined that she died from asphyxiation due to manual smothering. We were able to prove through that autopsy that what Chris told us about what Shanann had done to Cece was false and that he had lied to us. We left the autopsies feeling that Chris Watts was solely responsible for the deaths of his entire family. Under Colorado law, an unborn child can't be the victim of a homicide, but there has to be a recognition that he killed his unborn son. His unborn son is named Nico. They had named him that. So we charged him with the only charge available to us under Colorado law to give us that recognition that Nico was also a victim of his father's acts. The charge that I had available to us is called wrongful termination of a pregnancy. We knew that there was another woman who was romantically involved with Chris Watts. As soon as we got her name, she called in to the tip line and said, hey, I'm the other woman, essentially. And after investigating, we were confident that she had no role to play in this tragic event. Mr. Watts, why did you kill your wife and two children? Today, prosecutors filed a motion requesting fingerprints, cheek swabs, and hand pictures from Chris Watts. They believe Watts is responsible for all three deaths. It was just utter disgust and shock. He did that, and he was standing in my house hours afterward. Yeah, no Hopefully something comes up here. I think that was one of the toughest things to swallow. No. Is knowing that he shook my hand hours after he did this to his family. We were preparing for a murder trial, and a murder trial that was going to last years. And all of a sudden, I receive a phone call from Detective Baumover, and he said, hey, Chris is going to plead guilty to all charges. Christopher Watts has pleaded guilty to killing his pregnant wife, Shanann, and two young daughters, Bella and Celeste, and their unborn son, Nico. Whoa, wait. Like, we're not done. We have all these things to do. We didn't examine all the evidence. We didn't interview every witness we needed to. We didn't do all of these things that you would do in a normal investigation because he stopped the clock. We were relieved that it was going to be over. But at the same time, we felt like, in a sense, we didn't finish. Mr. Watts entered a plea of guilty to all nine counts. Those counts include murder in the first degree after deliberation as to Shanann Watts, murder in the first degree as to Bella Watts, murder in the first degree as to Celeste Watts, unlawful termination of a pregnancy as it relates to Nico Watts. The one deal that he made for himself was that if he pled guilty to all those charges that he would not be subject to the death penalty. The only way that I'm going to accept that offer is if that is absolutely what Shanann's family wants. Present here in the room with us today is Frank Rusick, Sandra Rusick, and Frank Rusick Jr., Shanann's brother, mom and dad. Sandy said it very, very poignantly to me. She said, he made the choice to take those lives. I do not want to be in a position of making the choice to take his. And, and that was very compelling to all of us as we were talking about um, how to proceed on this case. Ultimately, Chris Watts was sentenced to three life sentences plus 84 years in prison. While we got some satisfaction with the fact that we knew that he would never have the opportunity to hurt anyone else again, we were all left with the fact that the story was not over. Now give me a hug. We all struggled with the fact that we didn't know what the truth was. By pleading guilty, he had admitted that he had murdered his entire family, but he had never told us what really happened to Bella and Celeste that night. They deserved to have their story told, and we needed to vindicate Shanann's memory, that Shanann loved her girls, and that she didn't have anything to do with their murders. Tonight, Watts sits in a Wisconsin prison serving